So for new hunters, that my opinion is if you want to go <coughs> hunt with a bow, you got to go javelina hunt. That should be your first big game animal you go hunt. It's perfect for archery. Agree. God Wouldn't made javelina for bow hunters. It's perfect, you know. That's what I always ask you because yeah. I've got three mounts here, two at the yeah. house, skulls laying all over. Yeah. And I get it, man. I mean, they are, <laughs> I think I posted a video of me and Renee stalking yeah. in, right? And just like 12 feet from them. Yeah. But you're right, man. I, I think if one for a new hunter, the adrenaline's there, the spot and stock practice. Oh, yeah. They can see and glass movement, too, right? They're hard to see. Absolutely. They look like, how many barrel cactus have you stocked? <laughs> I never stocked a barrel <laughs> cactus. <but> I have. <laughs> yeah, my dad shot one years ago. <laughs> shot, a, shot one with his Oneida. That's how, that's oh, how geez, long ago this was, right. yes. But, uh... Yeah, this year when I stopped, I don't even think I've told you the story. So it was wet this year, snow, and the javelina were spread out because this water. <laughs> Finally, I glassed this one up. He's by himself. I thought, you know, but I'm thinking there's going to be 10 others I can't see. Wind's good. I stalk in. As I'm stalking in, and I'm like right where he should have been, and I'm like ready to hear one wolf at me or something. I look to my left and see something, with, and I'm like, something, something not right here. See this big tail flip up like this? It was three quatamondes. Oh, 40, 40 yards from me. All right. So I was like, shoot, did I, am I that bad a hunter? I glassed up a Quatamande and thought it was a Javelina. I look out front, Javelina goes up into this juniper, so I stalked in on him. He was by himself, solo. He was an old boar, missing half his teeth, had been kicked out kicked of the out herd. Of the right. And uh, I stalked up behind him. I stood at nine yards from this guy for six minutes, waiting for him to turn, you know? So I shot him at nine yards finally. But I wanted to get closer gosh dang bush in the way you know what pin did you use at nine yards and this I, use is something... 20. I always use a 20 okay. i don't get fancy i shoot the car I'll, I'll go to archery shoots and have those three footers at the cart i'll just use a 20 and, and it's you... always in the 10 for me. really always these are those i'm when you have the hate yeah. the carp shot but i'm usually yeah. 50 yard pin on those really to hit the, to hit the x actually, really you know I mean? so, yeah i, hit I mean the... 10 you're gonna hit right see if i aim 20 at the x I'll hit it every time, even on those like three foot carp shots. Really? I'm serious, yeah. yeah I'm so I don't high. get fancy with it. Huh. But yeah, it's funny because I was talking to our. Hey, what? Hold on. What did you do with the Quarter Monday? Did you get I didn't do one? anything. I didn't know you could shoot them. Oh, so I, I've only seen one in 19 years. I know, I know. So <laughs> I, I've been going out there. This is my 21st year going out there. I've seen them twice. And the, 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 set, the first time I saw one was last year. And I mean, this was like a mile away through the binos. I saw the tails. So this time I was 40 yards, you know, and uh, yeah, I found out after you could shoot one. Yeah. I mean, I could have, and I would have for sure over a Havelita, you know, I have a bunch of them, but I, I am glad I got that old boar. It's just cool seeing him missing all his teeth. If you guys have never seen one of these, look them up. They're funky, like a it's raccoon. Like, it's like a monkey, monkey slash raccoon. raccoon. Right. And I think their tails, like they can actually hook them on trees and right. stuff and climb. So they're, they're pretty neat. But the first time I glassed them up, it was funny because I'm looking at this ridge top long ways away and i see all these things going like this and i'm like what am i looking at is it like medusa up here or like a snake or like they're what all talking and i water. thought it was like a snake like a bunch of snake heads but i was like they're too big and then finally i figured it out it's like oh they're like five foot tails up in there there was like 10 of them awesome. and then they went over the ridge right when i saw them no kidding but uh that was the first time i'd seen them so. That's cool, man. We've only seen one or an eight. Yeah, I, I had her take the shot on it, fifty some odd yards. Yeah, I want to mount one. I think they're they're just so awesome, cool. Right? Yeah. What is your like? Obviously, we have spent a lot of time in the woods. What's the the most scared you've ever been? Like either you were lost or you bump into a grizzly bear. Or like, what's the one time you're like, things are not going good right now? You ever had one of them moments? I never had an animal moment like that. Um, no, I really can't say I've been afraid that way. I've, the only time that I really, really, really was scared in the woods, I've never seen a mountain lion in the woods, which hits me just stupid. You've never in seen one? Never. Really? You know, maybe that's a good thing, right? Yeah, but, uh, I've seen six, seven, not many. Lucky dog. Not many, yeah. But the scariest for me, me and Renee, uh, my wife, we were hunting Tahoe Ranch, right? Mm. So in my infinite wisdom, I took a shortcut to get to where I wanted to go. It was kind of a scale on the side of a cliff kind of thing and then dropped down. And I got down and I'm waiting for an A and she's coming down and coming down and I, I'm looking over her glass and I look back and I see her fall off this cliff. Well, I can only see a certain amount of this. I'm like, holy crap, you know, you're freaking out. Yeah. We're deep, man. Yeah. I go running over there and she landed on her back, on her backpack. But, it, dude, I'm talking like a 16 foot drop, right? Jeez. 
you know, typical Renation jump jumps. I'm okay. You Jeez. know, and I'm like, geez, oh, peak. So for me, I mean, that wow, that was probably the only Jeez. only thing, man. Wow. Yeah. But I, I haven't hunted, you know, like Montana, where every turn has a grizzly bear. I've had two, two. I've had a couple that were were pretty pretty wild moments. But um, I would say the most scared I've ever been was I was hunting Montana, snow middle. I mean, middle. There's nobody out here, you know. Right miles and miles of nothing no cell coverage i go for my dad and i go on a hike together up in the snow and we stalk down we're following this bowl down this like it was unbelievable what this bowl was going down i mean it's like vertical like this i'm sliding down and i had marked the truck on gps you know but where this bowl was going he was going into a deep canyon i thought if i just run the canyon left i'm going to get to the road eventually and i'll just walk to the truck Right. So I get down there. It's deep. I'm talking lot rock cliffs both sides. And I'm walking, walking, Which walking. packing snow. Yeah, exactly. And it's like literally you have to rock climb out of this thing. I'm walking too far now. And I'm like, something's not right. It's getting dark. I whip out my GPS. And it's cold, like real cold. And it says no signals. Oh. It's so deep in here. So I'm like, this is really not good. It's like dark at this point. So I walk a little further. Finally, it like comes on. I'm hoping it says the truck's in front of me. It's like three miles behind me. Wow. Like, so I had to scale this wall out of here, which was sketchy in the dark. Made my, and there's grizzlies and mountain lions. So I have my bear spray, my bow. I get back to the truck at two hours beyond dark. No radios, nothing. So I'm thinking my dad's going to be there freaking out that I'm like dead. Sure. I get to the truck. He's not there. Oh, now you're freaking so out. So I'm Where's freaking out. <laughs> Another two hours go by. He makes it back. We both basically, we weren't lost. I mean, you know what I mean? But it was with it dark and the grizzlies and being so deep out there. It was sketchy. That night was like, that night was wild, you know? So I to me, that was, that was one of the times where I was like, thank, if you don't have a GPS, like I know everyone has Onyx. To me, one of the biggest tips I can get, give, have a compass and have an old school, like Garmin GPS as well. Because if your phone doesn't have service, you just... I like that more than one thing you could trust. Right, absolutely. You know, now, you know, you were hunting with somebody, so now you're kind of, I don't know, man. You, you, the thought's just not on on you. Okay, I made it. I'm good. It's like like hunting with Renee. You know, and I, yeah. I encourage people have a hunting partner, man. Something south, you know, for you, awesome. Your dad. I mean, that's doesn't get better. Every right, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. The only thing better than that would be hunting with your spouse. Your wife, yeah, you know, exactly. That's that's great stuff. But um, do you like to hunt solo? I did. So that buck, my second story I didn't tell you, my heartbreaker was the buck, and I told you plenty about him. Yeah. He's, he's probably the biggest buck I've ever chased. Um, he's big enough that I hunted. I worked here Saturday and cut out shop after Saturday, drove bonsai trip over, got four hours of sleep, and hunted him. <laughs> so Renee was ready to murder me. Um, but yeah, I, I think in the right scenario, I'm okay with it, right? Yeah. I probably shouldn't have where I was at because yeah. it was a little deeper than I. You ain't gonna get found, you know, unless someone knows where you're at. Renee knew where I was going, so everything was good there. Um, I think there's some pros and cons to it. I don't think you have to worry about, okay, where's your hunting partner at? <clears throat> Movement, scent. Um, you guys are both obviously chasing the same deer if you both blast them up. My rule is when me and my buddy or me and Renee hunt, whoever finds it, first stop. You want it or do you want to, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I'm okay with it in a scenario. Would I go on a uh, 10 day pack in the middle of nowhere hunt so uh, probably yeah. not yeah i just think too much stuff could happen yeah and certainly i mean the risk is there i i just enjoy i do like hunting by myself it's something about just like, now hunting hunting yeah i'll hunt solo all the time yeah but, i just um, like it i like being right. out in the middle of nowhere nobody else there like but as you said you have to be aware that there's risks and that's what i'm saying like having multiple ways to know how to get back to you know whatever it is a car or whatever you've got to have multiple things just as you you never know you never know what can happen in the woods that's what's right. absolutely that's what's pretty crazy um well, let me ask you a question yeah out of all your hunts out of all the species you've harvested mm -hmm. what's your biggest if you could settle it out to one hunt what was your biggest rewarding what's the word i'm looking for what was your best hunt not just the hunt part of it but it's just the whole overall scenario what was your one hunt that you can say dude if I could have a hundred of these, I'd die a happy yeah. man. I think I actually have, uh, I think I have two, if I'm going to say two. One, when I was 
you sold me a Botech equalizer because I had a cracked limb on my PSE Spider right, right before. That was a nasal it though, was a, right? Uh, yeah, it was. No, but you sold me a new one. She had it too, though. Right, but you shot her. Just, right, yeah, right, we right, both right. had the same boat. I do, yeah. So I believe, and I could have a timeline, it was either right before a Havelina hunt or right before an elk hunt. I think it was right before an elk hunt. We finally drew the tag, you know, for a bull in Arizona. It was 2006. We went out there. This was pre-rangefinder. I didn't even have a rangefinder yet. And I got a 5x5 five five bull as a little kid. You know, I, I remember it. You dude. know, so that that one was one of them. I remember that. That that was a wild elk hunt. I mean, there were just elk everywhere going crazy. And this guy hopped a fence. And it's funny because no rangefinder. I'm used to hunting deer. I guess the yardage. I watched my arrow go underneath him. But he was rutting so hard. He just got so walking. big and he looks so much closer. Exactly. So <laughs> I draw back again. He, he never ran. He drew back again. I buried one like perfect in him. My dad always told me, though, he said, if you can keep shooting, shoot more. He still didn't run. I put a whole quiver of arrows in him. I shot him five times. And the, and the first shot was a hard shot. But I just kept like 26 and a half inch draw. I just kept right, pumping right. them full of arrows. That's so that's awesome. one of them. That one was crazy. And and then um, my other one would be in 2014. I went to New Mexico uh, for mule deer, and I hunted out there. It was it was it was hard, man. It was a tough hunt. Day 17 rolls around. I was out there that long. We glass and we got I glass this buck like miles out. I could I couldn't even see what he was. I just knew he was a good buck. Right, and I'm I'm. It's so far away, I need my dad's help with phone to, like, text me and just make sure I'm, like, in the Still correct in the same area. Right. Exactly. As soon as I see the buck, white wall runs runs in. I mean, it's just fog. You can't see anywhere. Uh. So I'm walking out there for, like, miles. And I, I literally call my dad. It's ra pouring rain now. So it's like, I call my dad. I go, I have no clue where I'm at. He doesn't either, you know. I look in front of me. I see this little white tail move. And I go, actually, I think I see him. Like, it's great. And I wasn't that far. So I put my sneaks on, stalked in on him, and uh, put him down. And it's pouring rain. And uh, awesome. he was a tank, too. That's a mule deer I got. He's got five inch brows, like, just so cool. Because we, I mean, we worked hard. Bigger than Clubber? No. I don't like your deer, dude. I got to say, Clubber for me. Houdini buck. Is that what you're calling him? Houdini buck. Yeah, you called him Clubber buck. Dude, that's that's what I know him. So every time I say, hey, dude, what about Clubber? Houdini, yeah. How do you can you not know him Clubber? Oh, man. So yeah, that buck, cool buck, that man. buck is crazy because I was hunting him for like a little while. I mean, as soon as I saw him, I saw two does through the binos and I saw like movement behind a bush. And I just told my dad, I was like, there's a good buck behind that bush, you know. And he walked out straight away from me. He was like tall, dark, thick, and narrow. And I was like, this is a weird buck. Like, you know, it was a ways away. And I go, I guess I'll, you know, try it. And just the process of hitting him once and getting him, like, yeah, that's up there, too. And just with how cool he is. He's got a baby's arm for a time. Yeah, I mean, five and just... a half inches of mass, <laughs> too. Yeah, it's just crazy. insane buck. Yeah. I mean, you sent me the picture. I'm like, oh, that's a cool buck. And you brought it in. I'm like, whoa, dude. That's what Travis said. He said, once I saw it, I was like, this thing is awesome. Like, right. You know? So, I don't know. Maybe I'll bring it to Travis's shoot so people can see it or something. Be a killer. Is but, uh, I don't know, man. I'd be afraid to put it in the car and something. I know, I know. Yeah. What about you? Top hunt. Same question? Top hunt. You know, it was more of a scenario, man. I've gone on a lot of great hunts, uh, but my elk hunt, dude, that, that bull I killed in Arizona. And it, and don't get me wrong, the hunt was good. I like hunting elk quiet. I don't like to call. I just, I, I call to locate them. Now I know the herd's over there and I just shut up, man. Same. I, I, I'll bump satellite bulls out and just become part of the herd. You know, the hunt, it was challenging. It was physical. Um, nastiest country I've ever hunted. Ended up killing a nice herd bull. Um, it, it was just a great overall hunt. But w what made that hunt special for me personally, it's, it's the hardest I've ever trained for a hunt. I mean, you know. I used to dump 50 pounds for that hunt because I knew it. I did my homework and we cut bases on that. Looking at topo map, man, when you go from big lines to there's a whole bunch of little black lines, you know, you're going to be hunting some nasty country, Steve's man. Nasty. So, you know, for me it was a whole process of just not the hunt. It was it was training your 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 butt off, eating right, living that life, getting ready for this. Go out, work your tail off, find elk, pass some bulls up, harvest this bull with a buddy that I've hunted with for 19 years. I mean, that's that's what makes it awesome, right? Um, but the most rewarding was me and my buddy, you know, I've got 
I've got the rack, my buddy's got back strap and loin first haul out, right? So elk, you know, you're making at least four or five mm -hmm. loads, 100 pound loads the next day out. Four, four and a half miles, almost five miles deep, so. But what made it the best for me, you're walking out, you know, you're thinking about everything, you got a hundred things going in your mind and it slams on you that man, it took me 14 years, you know, I'm, I'm 49, I'm an old bastard, right? Yeah, yeah. But I'm 49, 14 years, I, dude, I don't know if I physically could do that hunt. It was, it was brutal. So you get up to the top, you crest out where the truck is, and then your other buddy that, that stayed up high, he didn't drop in the bowl with me and Jeff. He had a fire going, dude, and I'll never forget this, man. He had a little fire going at the end of the truck. He goes, yeah, I figured you guys got an elk. So I walk up, I'm physically shot, I'm mentally shot. I drop the rack. It, dude, it was just the whole scenario, right? I mean, you got yeah. a fire, you just harvested a great elk. It was a phenomenal hunt. It kind of... You guys are going to call me names, I don't care, but dude, it kind of choked me up, cheered me up a little That's bit, most, man. Yeah, it, was, sure. it was just the epitome of a freaking hunt, dude. That's awesome. You, you get back to camp, I think I gobbled down, I don't even remember, dude. It wasn't healthy, though, but I just gobbled whatever I had there <laughs> down, got two hours of sleep, cramped all night, right? Yeah, of course. Went out and started hauling meat, and I'm just like, dude, this is what it's all about, yeah. man. Yeah. Uh, DIY, public land, freaking go get it done. Oh man, love that. Yeah, right? same. Yeah, I mean that's just that's what it's about. You know, another hunt. I want to ask you about Renee getting that buck because I know that was quite a story for her to you know get that done. But for me, another one that really is cool is um, watching my dad. Um, he stalked in on this beautiful four by three buck. I'm watching through the binos and then, you know, to see it all unfold from miles away was just so, I get more pumped when he gets something than I do. And it's right, funny because right. it used to be the same for him back in the day, you know, so we're both pumped, but this year. And he, you know what? I'm like, I'm going to cut you off. Yeah, yeah. I tip my hat to your pop, dude, because yeah. he, and you get this, he's, he's given up a lot of animals. I'm sure he could have mm. smoked. Oh yeah. So the son could do it. Right? Yeah. Early on, Way early good on stuff, for man. sure. Way good thing. Um, and, and this year, his favorite animal has always been a bull elk. His goal, his life goal, literally, as far as being a hunter, is to get a bull elk with his bow, six-point bull with his bow. This year, he got his first ever bull with a bow. And it was six on one side, broke off five on the other, so he got it done. That, to me, was like, doesn't get better than that, you know? Big celebration in the woods. Oh, of course, yeah, of course, nice. you know? So, nice. But, yeah, tell me about Renee's buck, because I know she had some health stuff. She and did. Kind man. of fought her way back. It was it was scary for a while, man. Yeah. I mean, uh, we both trained hard, and I think she just pinched something that did something. I mean, it was getting major. Like we were contemplating some neck surgery. I'm like, man, it's just, I just, I, I, I can't believe at this age that you're having to go through this, right? So, we kind of went the other route, man. The two doctors were like, yep, we want to cut, we want to cut, and I'm like, no, nah, man, let's look at a different round. So, I got her a personal trainer in Alpine. Uh, gym bitch it's it's motivated is, mm -hmm. is uh, the name of the gym and she started going three times a week putting the work in um muscle it's just like you're talking with the shoulders man your body's the best healing thing if you're working if you know someone that that can tell you how to do it proper man that makes it even better so she dedicated out got it done um she's killed renee's funny i mean a lot of these mounts in here are hers a caribou she's killed hogs whitetail javelina elk you know she's done it all but that one animal she's never she got a mule deer doe she never killed a mule deer buck wow. so you know last year i hit hard on her you know i didn't hunt three days four days straight i just my goal i'm gonna get her name mule deer buck and and it was a learning curve you know where where i needed to learn i know you're watching this <laughs> what i needed to learn is i get anxious right you know so the deer's coming it's a mad battle she drew too late whatever it might be where it got blown huh? you know it's like Hey, what are you doing? You know, and all that, that's no good, right? That, you're, this is what's going to happen the whole time. And guys need to remember that when you start hunting as a family or with your wife, whatever it might be, have patience, man. So what I learned now is if something goes wrong, what'd you learn? Just like you said, you know, what'd you learn as a bow hunter to do different next time? So she put it all together, man. I, I, we put a lot of miles in. Um, He's not a huge buck. It's her first buck. Doesn't she did matter. it herself. Doesn't matter. I gave her the range. She put the stock. She, she shot it. Here's where she got upset with me. She gave me the the, the, the winky eyes and oh, baby, can you got this? I'm all nope. So <laughs> she ended up. She did the whole thing, man. Nice. She gutted her own. And we we're gonna post that video up because I recorded it. Yeah. So I'm like, I don't know about this. Might offend people, but yeah, she gutted the whole animal. Um, I drug it up the hill. It's a little bit of help for her, but she drug it from the park down to the truck. 
and uh, wow. we skinned it out together. So That's for her, stuff. great accomplishment, right? She got the monkey Huge. off her back. Huge. Yeah. They always put so much pressure on bow hunters, right? Yeah. You're like, hey, I just got to make it happen. Now she's got it off. She can cruise and, and think about the hunt a little bit more and, and learn. Do you find yourself like rushing a lot when you're on in the heat of a hunt? Do you find yourself like subconsciously going faster and like kind of speeding things up? No, I, you know, don't get me wrong, if that thing dipped behind a hill and I know I got wind and I got to get in front of them, I'll rush it up. But no, if anything, course, I slow yeah. down. I think, man, I can't, I can't remember how it goes. I'm like you, you know, big Burnsworth fan. He uh, held a shot, but I, he only, what is he He says you can walk? only go as fast as you are quiet. There you go. And yeah. it's so true, I mean. That's a great analogy. But, I mean, with that being, like, I'm a huge fan of going slow. I, like, I'll, I, I usually just hunt with my dad. You know, but last year we went to have a lean hunt with a couple guys, and or the last two years, or the prior two years, this year it was just me and my dad again, but they went on stocks with me, and the year before that I'd helped the lady get her first javelina ever, and they stalked with me as well. The one where I stalked with her was hilarious because I'm on the ground with her, and I told her, hey, just walk right behind me, step exactly where I step. So I'm walking, you know, real, real slow, using the wind and gusts. I'm like, the wind's shifty, so I'm like always adjusting. Her husband's watching on a hill. They're new hunters, and he's telling my dad, he goes, "What's he doing? Why isn't he going faster? They're gonna get, they're gonna leave. They're gonna leave." My dad's like, "Yeah." Oh, thank God he's on the hill. He got it. He, <laughs> he got it. He's like, that's the thing. People tend to think the animals are gonna leave. They're not gonna leave right. unless you bump them. Uh, right. In the rut, rarely you'll have one pick a doe and just you know get out of town, but. I always say you can take all the time in the world. They're, they ain't gonna move unless you bump them, you know. So right, and that's what makes rut a bittersweet, right? Yeah. The buck's so stupid. Yeah. But if that doe moves, I guarantee that bucks. Yeah. Now, mm -hmm. I, and I know you have. I've killed two bucks that looked right and I'm like this is over. Yeah. And right back to the doe, and I was like, oh, yeah. are you kidding me right now? Yeah. So that's a perk, but. But like I, I said too, saying, sometimes man. you do after you know you. Sometimes you got no one to turn it on though. Like my buck in September, you know, I kind of got two bucks back to back. The one in September, I glassed him up in the evening, and normally I don't even stalk in the evening. But he was way up this canyon. It was like monsoon moving in, wind was in my face. So it was like hour till dark, mile or two up this thing, and I go, "This is too perfect not to try." Right. So I, I literally dropped in this ravine. It was deep. No way they could see or smell me or hear me with how windy it was. I full booked it for like a mile and a half, ran, you know, because I knew I needed to get there. It was right. dark. Worked out, ended up getting it done. So sometimes you do got to turn on the burners, but guess what? When I was in their personal space, back to like speed, almost zero, you right. know. Right. So I think I think that's something you just learn with time, you know. That's, that's a great point, right? You know? No, absolutely. You know, where you can do it when you yep. don't have to, because it's it's nerve wracking sometimes. So I, I tell you guys all the time, I there's a lot of times I wish I just looked to the left and all of a sudden there's a big deer there, right? Instead yep. of oh, dude, I've worked this thing for 500 yards or he's yep. I'm watching him come. Yep. That gets a little hinky after a while. Yep. So, but it's all a challenge, right? Yeah. I can't believe you've never seen a lion. That's crazy. Wow. I'm kind of happy about it, wow. but I've never seen a land. You know, I spend a lot of time. Oh, yeah. Especially Arizona. When you're on a rock it, glassing for an hour. Oh, I've, I've only seen one glassing ever. I've seen, mo no, two. I saw one local and one in uh, New Mexico glassing. Most, the first time I ever saw one, I'm like you. I spent my whole life I've been in the field since I was like five years old. My dad took me on big game hunts. So I was out there, never had seen one. I was, I was like, let's say like 15. Still never seen one. My, my dad and I are parallel like this. I'm up on a little ridge. He's down in a ravine. We're only like 20 yards apart. Walk in. I see something like 10 feet in front of him, like jump out of the bottom. It's like a 200 pound cat, 10 feet from him. Might as well make it a Pops big one. <laughs> leaves, and then I'm like, whoa, you know, I've never seen one, so it was crazy. Another one jumps up. So there's two of them right in front of us. Holy smokes. And that was the first time I had seen one. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, in Montana, I saw two about a hundred yards a piece. It's just like they're a beautiful animal. Absolutely. I mean, you see one, it's just like wow. But just like anything, right? I mean, yeah. you just—I'll tell you—and you know this, our San Diego County, dude, we've just got tons of man, lions. It's—I don't know. That's a story for another. I think I think California eventually will have to make changes on that front. We'll see if it happens. But you would think, right? I think I they're going to have to. I mean, yeah. you see, I saw I saw a, like a a home whatever security camera in like Sacramento in the middle of the city full grown mountain lion walks up the thing in, in like a like a Mount Woodson style like in a state right 
He's like, geez, that is not safe. <laughs> you know? Probably the most hinky one. I had a guy come in here, and, you yeah. know, of course, everybody comes and says, hey, check out this buck on this trail camera. Yeah. Check out, and I'm like, hey, you know, stuff's all going to change once yeah. 5,000 people walk in the woods. But showed a picture of him, time stamp, and he was in a ground line, right? So just at the base of a tree, got built a ground line out of twigs and leaves and stuff. He sits down. So he's all, now watch this. And he goes, he said, I'm going through this, and he had a mountain lion picture on that same camera literally five minutes before he got there. So Ooh. mountain lion click, five minutes later, he's climbing in his ground. Wow. That's hinky, dude. I, uh, I had a similar one. Uh, I probably showed you the picture. It's just a broadside of like a huge mountain lion along with trail cam. It's like by far biggest one I've ever seen. Local. This is in, in San Diego County. I go down to check the camera, and I, I brought my dog with me because it was off season. Bring my dog. We go to check the camera, and I built a water hole nearby. Yeah, right next to the water hole, big mountain lion track. Walk, check the camera. An hour before that giant mountain lion the one left was the there, track? that huge one that yeah, I saw in yeah. the picture that I showed you, like right. 200 plus pounder. And I had my dog with me, and I was like, "Jeez, dude, I don't feel good about this." But we 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 got it back in there and left all good. But it's crazy. It's just like a little nerve wracking. Kind of hinky, know? right? Yeah, right. Yeah, it's wild. Well, anyways, guys, we've been talking a long time, so this for another it's hour. been fun. We could go another hour. <laughs> we'll probably we'll probably do another one of these at some point. And uh, but I want to thank everybody for watching. Come down to the bow shop if you haven't. Come to Travis to shoot March thirty first. Shoot with us. Meet us. If you guys got any questions, anything about archery, come down and talk, man. I'm James. You can talk to anybody that knows me. I'm not a salesman. I don't want to come off that way at all. Zero zilch. Um, any questions about it? Wondering how to get into it? What it's all about? Call me. Come see me. Let's play. Let's talk. Yeah. And if you want to, hey, thanks for this opportunity, man. I know it's something you've been working on. Your life's busy. Mine's busy, but. Uh, Thanks for slowing me down to 55 and, and, and doing this. This Absolutely. is awesome, dude. Yeah, I'd love to do it again, man. Thanks for yeah, doing brother. it. Absolutely. And, Thanks uh, for having me. See you guys soon. See you.